Hi, in this video we're discussing the di Divergent CRM, which really is a three-year, maybe a five-year project in all that um, we've been researching. Well, we've been researching it since 2011 with this business plan, and we did two years of theory, which uh, ended up as American Butterfly, and it's, you know, it's very, very detailed. If we have a look at the index of this first book, you can see we've got 42 chapters, and if we randomly look at a chapter, you can see there's a lot of detail. This is a length of about 12 novels. We are presenting it as the longest business plan ever made to Guinness Book of Records. They're considering it at the moment. There is no other contender. They're just wondering whether it's worth having a record under that name. Okay, we've got an agenda. We'll be looking at the original business plan from Virgin and American Butterfly. We'll be looking at current projects. These are the three projects that we cut. One of them we finished, Magic Keywords, Magic Menus we're working on. CMS Logic is the, uh, the way we build CMSs inside of um, complex systems. We're looking at the inquiry system. We're looking at the CRM. We're looking at email marketing. We're looking at clients and owners content management suites. We're looking at booking systems, financial systems, marketing platform, content marketing and media, analytics, hospitality, advanced projections from the CRM, tutorials, virtual network, resort development, and then how we're going to be putting it all together. And this is going to be in sections and it's going to be scrappy. This is the first time this has ever been committed to video and this video is really is, is a business plan. Okay, so let's let's get to it. Let's look at the original 2011 business plan for Virgin in which we describe a CRM straight away in different industries. But specifically this one was for um, safaris we had a safari website that we had built and Sotheby's Realty wanted to do a deal with us through Cape Villas our villa rental company and we couldn't copy that website because it was it was a mess and the people who originally made it were not there anymore and it would have cost an absolute fortune to duplicate it whereas this one was on the fly and you know it was two seconds and it was duplicated as African concierge and this gave us the idea of creating a great website and a great framework and literally just making new versions i.e. now we've got the Villa Secrets framework that'll be ready for launch on the new good looking version in about a month's time and magic menus will be finished about the same time we can then approach Sotheby's again but not just Sotheby's in Cape Town or Sotheby's in the 40 different locations that they uh, represent and say do you want a villa rental website some will not because they already have a villa rental side for their business others will obviously we're going to start it slowly in Cape Town and then move to Bali's and maybe we'll use Sotheby's each time maybe we'll use other people it depends on who's Who's, who's keenest and who has the most to offer. So that's that's where this came from. There's a whole load of work on how just simply duplicating a website doesn't work um, because you need original content. But you can duplicate the framework as long as all the content is changed or more to the point, if all the content is, um, if it is, if it has been seen before is, is put in a low priority and there's new content in a higher priority. But that's um, magic menus for you. That's part sitemap. We included a global distribution in this plan for for Virgin, and this came back from 2004 when we started looking at uh, global distribution systems. We have now done this, but we didn't use a global distribution system. We used a smaller property management system, and we're soon going to be doing the same thing for um, Bali and Hawaii. Hope Vacation Roost are going to be playing ball with us soon. Okay, here we look at um, the organizer section of the... Um, the CRM. Um, um, here we look at a unique offering, which is we save maybe 1% of uh, each booking, and that gets put into a guest allowance, and we send the guests chocolates or flowers or perfume on their birthday or their anniversary we're actually we, we, we're actually working on this quite 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 hard now 
um, we're just making the system. We've we're going to offer uh, Moe and my 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 friend's jewelry company. She's uh, Lisa Marie. Her her wares as well. So that this is a project in the on the fly. Financial module. It had to connect to the finance, and it had to be so easy that we had. Actually, this isn't a good example of how we would show it now. This was just an idea in 2011. But we wanted the CEO to always, and the managers, to always see the management accounts as what's going on exactly, you know, really, really simply. Okay, there's various other other parts, including um, e-commerce, working with big business, working with Facebook and Google. And, you know, this business plan showed... Hundred and twenty two thousand pounds made over five years for um for that for the travel industry, hell of a lot more for if we could adapt the uh, framework into all industries and you know, there was two years of development on how to work this into industries. Virgin did say yes to this initially, but uh, I got a little bit spiritual with them because it was quite close to the time that I was going through a spiritual phase and yeah we didn't we didn't move forwards but um you know it's primed for us to return to virgin and say look you like this in the first place now we've got two years of theory on how to make it work in all businesses and we've got three years of product development okay let's move on to american butterfly okay here we have american butterfly a spiritually inspired global networking project that considers the butterfly effect within the USA global macro and microeconomics, 11 dimensions and the universe. In short, we're using chaos theory and thinking about small and big businesses and we're paying attention to string theory, which is that 11 dimensions, actually that's M theory, but uh, string theory has 10 dimensions, but I don't want to get into that. Okay, this is a summary of the 600,000 words that we found in the first research website, sworld.biz. And we just present it with a quote. You may not predict what an individual may do, but you can put in motion things that will move the masses in a the direction they desired, thus shaping, if not predicting the future. And if one was to go through the entire book, one would realize that all the software that we're creating now is a part of that system that will help move the masses in the, in the, in the right direction. It starts with uh, a book that is online. One can just go to the footer and click part one, Theory of Every Business. <clears throat> this book looks at how one can recruit other network and other industries into our network and the elaborate plan is to build large resort developments and all the companies that work within have to use the network all the companies that supply it have to use the network and the network expands by creating more and more of these resort developments and there's there's a lot of theory behind this and you know it it, it would work if one had the money one gets the money by creating a large a ring of estate agencies who can find off-plan customers for such developments. Okay, this is the uh, interesting part in terms of what we're doing right now, system development. This is the, um, the system core for the S-World network. And we've, we've made Quest, the quantum economic system core, and S-World PQS, predictive quantum software this is all in theory but we are now building towards this this gives us we know where we want to go okay this is good this is the network on a string where we start looking at uh, 16 elements within particle physics that improve the networks in various ways from profitability to long-term predictions we then moved into making a business book, a SWOT analysis. We considered what partners we wanted. We considered implementation strategies. We considered creating African experience. Africa is a lost leader. The most important thing here was we focused on the SWOT analysis and we looked at, you know, what were the threats? What were the weaknesses? And the biggest weaknesses, we had no product. 
we had a load of stuff on theory we had a load of business plan but we had no product this was the beginning of 2013 about three years ago right now and we st at the, after the after this we started making the product this is the product we started creating you see at the bottom when it comes up villa secrets marketing and software framework that once it's completed will create experience africa as well which is under the sienna foundation which is currently being registered as a uk charity the end game is to create a virtual network and this is going to be really fun everything that's being done is a part of a game and this game is visual on social networks or on your computer as sort of a version of the sims so you can see everything going around but your friends will have gps's and if someone's gone to saint tropez and they're on saint tropez beach you can just go hi friend you can tap on them and you can see a virtual um world from where your friend is in position this we create into a great big virtual network including a business network and eventually we send versions of this network forward in time at double our pace so in a year's time in our world it'll be two years past in s world people will be doing the business in the future versions of s world virtual network and in those future in those future versions of one's business one sees if things works out if it works out you do that if it doesn't work out you don't do that the more time goes on the more future versions there are and basically you end up with economic time travel as a lot of business gets done in the future before it actually happens in real time okay let's look at the why this is my darling daughter Sienna who is the inspiration for everything that is done Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at the agenda. Okay, we've looked at the original Virgin business plan and American Butterfly. Let's move on to current projects. Okay. First, magic keywords and attribute scores this is the video I've made uh, the link is on the page that will be sent with this or on the blog that you see it with and it's 59 minutes long okay and we're just gonna really sum it up this is Cape Town luxury villas the um, website we created before Villa secrets this was the prototype if you will and if we can see here it automatically generates headers and titles and it automatically makes them out of keywords and if you see here we've got three titles on this page and if we see here um, don't worry about these these are the paid ads but it does give you an idea of how how present our group is we're at number one in paid number two in paid we're at number one with Villa Secrets in organic search we're at number two with Cape Town Luxury Villas with organic search we're at number three with Cape Town Luxury Villas we're at number four with capevillas.com so we are one two three four five six out of the top seven places on that search if we look at a different one we can see ads number one and two again sorry that's the same one my mistake we can see here Villa Secrets at number one Cape Villas at number three and four and we see Cape Town Luxury Villas is there now we think Cape Town Luxury Villas is lower here because we've actually put too many of that specific keyword on the phrase on the page so it's seen it as spam if we look at a slightly less used keyword and note we're number one in the ads again and Cape Villas is number two in the ads again we're number one in or Google organic search what does this lead up to it leads up to 28% of bookings be 
20% of inquiries coming from Google Organic. $104,000, $20,000. But we don't know if that's $20,000 because we don't know if this inquiry got, um, how many of these inquiries got uh, turned into a, a sale in comparison to the Google AdWords that we see here. Um, we will be connecting this, and this is a part of the Divergent CRM, so we can see that out of these 104, exactly how much money we made. But at the moment, you know, this is a pro this is a this is a process. This is why we're doing the Divergent CRM. So anyway, you know, 28% of income made largely due to the system that we call Magic Keywords. Okay, Magic Menus. Magic Menus is a project that we're working on right now. It is half done, half will be done over the next couple of months. And within it, we discuss CMS logic, which is a way to create complex systems. We um, just very, very, very quickly, this, this shows how we rotate the top 10 villas. They'll be swapping positions all the time depending on the amount of hours and one can change the hours if one wishes. There are various different components. And to get an idea of it, and sorry, sorry if this looks scrappy, but this isn't really for the public to see. This is for the system architects to uh, and, and um, people who have been trained how to use this. We've got things like the position of a villa will move up the menu if it's seen four times in Google Analytics. Again, it will move up the menu if it is seen in to have any links on Moz, which is a link and domain authority analytics website that has a CRM that you can, we, uh, an API that we can use. Okay, we will be adding to this various things, but really we're not talking about this much. You can watch the video on magic menus. Okay, CMS logic. CMS logic is the idea that for every single part of the system, we create a CMS page, i.e. this page here, where I can change this, for instance, if this was a popular website, one would want to change if Mars equals two, that basically is, is still quite a low ranking to maybe 10 or 20 there. And um, it, this one here moves it up to priority 10, which is a sitemap priority, but it also affects the uh, position in the menu. That would go to maybe 40. But um, considering we're starting small, we, we, we have the, the values that we do. Each individual section that we do has its own CMS page that can be changed. And really all we're gonna be presenting is this page which shows how to make your top 40 or top 64 as it is now villas out of different sections you've got your top three your top your top 10 rotating you've got the highest in the main list you've got the highest attribute score you've got the highest attribute score under a certain price um you've got ads whatever you want that's that changes the menu it all shuffles around keeps everything fresh and um there's a very unique way in which new villas come into it and get seen slowly fall down the list then get a score from the amount of page views they've got and that places them into a position in the master listing so it's 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 great stuff it really will be a, of of a great help because we i i've known from experience that staff when you present them with a website they never change the uh the menus they've got the options to but they just don't they just they want to do their sales they want to do their thing they don't want to be fluffing around changing websites so what happens is the the, the same old villas and it, this it, it it becomes a snapshot of time of when i first created the menu i.e. Cape Town Luxury Villas menus are two years old. If we look at Cape Villas menus, they're still back in 2008. 
Um, by having this system in place, the menu is always updated. New videos that get into it get a fair shot and uh, it, it encourages fresh content over non-fresh content by placing non-fresh content right the way down the bottom of the sitemap. So it really, it really does a lot. Very practical system, it, although it may be not the first thing anybody would think of. Oh, I need to make sure my videos, my products are in the right, are showing in the right way. But it is important because if you've got all those products there, clients come along and you know the main thing they're looking for is they're not looking at your website they're looking for a villa that looks good if you've got a villa that looks good on a good looking website obviously that's better so you know okay so we've talked about CMS logic and basically CMS logic is the way the way of building a system by creating many many CMS's and one can do this via a junior programmer most of this is done with a junior programmer someone who's literally just come out of university no experience whatsoever is building all of this uh, or overseen by a, a senior Zen certified programmer but uh, and, and directed by me however you know because of uh, the inexperience we're having to make it very very simple but now this has become a way to make CMS's, i.e., we're looking at this divergent CRM that this whole video is about, and you know, two, maybe five years work, and I can see 200, maybe a thousand different CMS pages like. Um, like this with hundreds of different things that you can change just to create the uh, the, the system in a way that is in, in it just it's just in a better way it, without these hundreds and hundreds of pages of CMS's that system could you couldn't you couldn't these CMS's become the foundations of the system okay they're, they're underground you don't see them they're just really for for the programmers and the system architects to uh, to use to help the people who 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 are setting from the website. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Inquiry systems number three. Connect the inquiry system to the CRM. View spreadsheet. Present opportunities to owners becomes the way we keep tra track of the inquirer, which avoids leads migrating from Villa Secrets franchises to that bit should be sorry to franchisees other businesses, and we hope encourages franchisees other businesses to join Villa Secrets network or the Villa Secrets software framework. Okay, let's get down to this. First of all, we're going to have a look at a very, very basic way. This was done for the original Cape Town Luxury Villas website between 2013 and 2014. And it's it's a list of inquiries. There's some good data, though. We don't use this much. The name goes in there, etc. Check in, check out. And we can see we've got a the beginning of a mini CRM inside of this with the booking probability last contact three days ago obviously that would be better if that was synced up with Outlook so it's to the second booking success converted changes it to green if fail why you know it's got, it's got some you know it's a it's a very basic CRM inside of a CRS and you know one could look through that and see the green we you know we we've got some useful data in here the bottom line is this always goes down to a database and one just recreates that database in a nicer way um but the first thing we've got to do is create our inquiries so they go into this system but they also go into the crm now i'm sure there are ways to do this in probably all the CRMs but I think 
it might be easier for us to just make our own system than try and put our system inside of another CRM. I.e. we connect to the CRM's API, we see all its data, and we then copy that data into a field of our own so as that field could then be linked to other CRM so eventually we can have five six seven different CRMs working so as when we won't go to a particular company and say we want to work with you they said oh but we use sugar CRM so that's okay plug it in works straight away so yes we've got to we've got to get this data and better data still we've got to make improved inquiry systems so as when the inquiry comes in they actually fill in the proper dates this you can see this guy has done but most don't and we would we would have a date picker we would ask them the pretty much the precise price and where they're looking for so as we've got all that data straight away so so one could immediately start sending out emails to people if necessary um, which in fact would be mostly okay let's just have a look at this here again connect to the inquiry directly to the CRM view spreadsheet okay let's have a look at this spreadsheet okay this is how I make the CMS logic pages normally I create it on a spreadsheet I then give that spreadsheet to the programmer the programmer makes it up like a spreadsheet but not in tables now um, you can see at the top here we've got various these little things here indicate a check button so one can display various elements there's estimated turnover or estimated completion show calendar month etc choose currency show inquiries significant show inquiries bookings or significant alerts and this is part of the financial system but it's also part of the CRM what we're doing here and I did this we started with the new team the Cape Villas team with Cape Town Nutshu Villas on the 18th of January um, we swapped teams and we hadn't advertised for a month as soon as the 18th of January came on we started advertising and <clears throat> it's a people have said that when you uh, don't pay Google AdWords for a while and then you start you get better inquiries the day you start or the day you pay your bill I never I thought there's no way that can happen but we looked here and there was a huge amount of inquiries came in on this first day on the 18th so this is how I want the inquiries to look so I can I can look and I can click this show data and this would appear so I can see on this day this was the value of the inquiries that came in if all were converted in fact we will actually see I think yes we've put a we've worked on the we've worked on a double principle here the first principle and actually we're gonna to have to see how this would look open to, to, to really understand this so this would be a simple month and one can see oh on that day we had this value of inquiries this day we had this value of inquiries this day this day that's nice that's good information to know but uh, if you click on show details it would open up like this and one would see all the inquiries and we're thinking of you know name agent the source of the inquiry the email address of the client and you know one would want to click on that and go into the CRM email or just directly into Outlook tracked by the CRM we've got to work that out uh, the nationality their phone number if it was there the value of the booking I that's the value that if this inquiry made a sale it would have made 350,000 rands for the owner and then we have the likelihood of booking now for this one I believe this was a Christmas it should actually it would be nice to show the dates here as well of the inquiry that's interesting I'm just gonna put a little note 
Show dates. Okay. However, I, I remember this one because, uh, as I do, and uh, it was a Christmas and New Year inquiry for over 14 days, which there's a lot of availability for at the moment. So there's a 75% chance of that booking turning out well because because there's because because there's a lot of villas a um, lot of availability a lot of good prices so that's a 75 percent could even say it was a hundred what we've got to look at here is the fact that there is a double a double uh, that I don't know what what we call this um, This, this, sorry, one second. Okay, I've just had to add the formula bar. We can see it at the top here. And we can see what's happening here is this value of booking 350,000 rounds is given a likelihood of booking of 75%. However, this figure here below also takes into account the average amount of bookings that get made per as um, per per the amount of inquiries i if on average if we look at things for every four inquiries that come in only one gets converted then we know that We've got a um, we've got to multiply this figure not only by its likelihood of booking in the first place, but by how well the salespeople do in general overall. And this 25% would be linked to exactly to how previous performance was bid. So if they've done really well and they've had 100 inquiries and they've made 50 bookings, that would change to 50. If They've only made one booking in 10 that would change to 10. I think at the moment it's, it's about 33. So I'm going to stick with 33, which actually changes all the numbers throughout the spreadsheet. So now we can see that this is worth a value of 86,000 rands in our pipeline. I.e. if it gets converted, it would actually be 350,000 minus the commission the commission average is 20 percent so that is all calculated over here it's um so it's a it's a bit complicated to explain and i haven't looked at this for a while um here's an email and evaluate that's an option that uh, would be put in um potentially the email is for a senior salesperson to email and um and to evaluate okay so we can see how we want to see these figures i.e. we're seeing the total uh, value of the booking we're timesing that by the likelihood of the booking if we see over here these ones here it's a 33 percent that was probably a booking for February where there's not much availability 15 percent you know different different percentages and this is how I would like to see the CRM I want to see the results like this so as each day one can look at this and at the end of the week I can see we got a predicted income of 653 and a commission of 131 now didn't end up like that but, um, some sales are still ongoing, particularly one of the big ones here. That's one I'm dealing with personally because I, I like the clients and they like safaris. Um, but uh, they did they did over this time they did do well. But you know, obviously, this you know has to change more like no more like fifteen percent. And what 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 we need to do is we need to na put put more layers into this because you know 
it's sort of skewing the stats because there's some you know bookings that come in that you know they're not going to happen or they're just not not worth not worth the time doing um and really we want to be sort of judging things not only on how many booking how many inquiries did we make from how many bookings did we have it's also we want to see how many inquiries did we make based on the good bookings that we had okay so anyway th this is the spreadsheet and this you know really this spreadsheet sort of inspired me to start learning a crm i hadn't used a crm before you had a, a little go at act but didn't get on with it and i realized that you know for me to build this this is relatively easy to build as, as in CMS logic, but as far as getting it integrated, this sales process, so as people start to use this, this gets updated, or you know, basically for this sheet to be updated via people doing the sales in Salesforce or in HubSpot blog, uh, CRM. Okay, I hope I hope I'm making sense anyway okay so that's the spreadsheet so it's connect the inquiries directly to the CRM and then make weekly weekly sheets so as we can see how much we expect to make that can be adjusted based on previous experience so it really is being very very accurate we, we adjust these these percentages until we know and then we can see based on the amount of inquiries we're getting in how much we should be making and of course it becomes a great way to uh, if one was to look at last week and go oh okay well we okay this one here call and evaluate all the ones with these actions and yes so basically we need to get the inquiry into the CRM and then take the CRM data out of the CRM into the API and back into our database so as we can create this view the calendar view of inquiries and of course then later have exactly the same but it will just show bookings etc 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 so now we're looking at okay the inquiry system in Cape Town there's a bit of trouble at the moment we've all been everyone's been using this razor system and that's that's pretty much how most of the bookings got made however the razor system there's some problems with it technically and the biggest Cape Town property management company just pulled their 80 villas from it so this could see the beginning of the end for that system and what we need to do now is we need to go back to the old way of contacting owners which is basically by email through our database fortunately Cape Villas Cape Town Luxury Villas has a huge database of villa owners and we're, at the moment we're, we're copying over all the contacts from Razor before they disappear so we can email them but what we need to do is we need to work with the, some of the systems we made with magic menus and automatically email the villa owners who are i.e. if there's this let's have a look at this inquiry here 24th of the 12th to the 2nd of the 4th 2nd of the 1st it's a 10 night booking up at new year now the lot of owners are not going to be happy with a 10 night booking at new year or it might even be nine nights however there are probably 250 maybe 350 villas available so we send this inquiry as soon as it comes in potentially before even the sales agent has seen it it looks at it I mean in an ideal world we would already have data on which owners would accept a 10 night booking and we'd only email them but for now we would literally email do they have they given a location if they've given a location of Camps Bay we would email every owner in Camps Bay asking if they would be interested in booking for this that, that dates what price would they be you know some will come back straight away some won't come back at all and immediately there's going to be you know many many prices given 
to the salesperson and one can the salesperson and we want these prices to be then seen within the CMS or CRM sorry or our version of the CRM so one could see right okay this this one's offered this one this one's offered this this one's offered this check 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 send that to the client these are the four top properties that we we we, we recommend done in a in an instant emailed 300 people using the amount of time that you know people wouldn't just just wouldn't be able to do that now we'd have thought this would be simple to just uh, make a system so as we can go into our api and use our dates and use our locations to to target those emails because we don't want to email everyone on our database we only want to email people who are relevant i if they want can bay it has to be in can bay if they want to be free bedrooms it needs to be free bedrooms la di da la di da but it's not as simple as it seems this seemed like the uh, well no sorry this pitch box seemed like the perfect uh, tool to use I had known it from link research tools they they recommended it and I'd seen it and what it does is it it's it's there and it's ready and it can send out you know hundreds of emails depending on uh, well, it can send it can send out hundreds of emails and they can come back and then it looks at the um looks at the the, the responses and puts the right responses into your uh, into your view so this was you know it's made for sending out emails in a, in a relatively large scale and having responses and dealing with it that way so that seemed but unfortunately whilst they've got an api the API is only currently made for search functionality. Spoke to a very nice guy there about potentially making it um, for 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 my purposes, and so they're sort of under the impression they like to be a. I think the phrase was a big fish in a little pond, um, and they don't really want to try and compete in the CRM market right now. So. We can't use them, no API, can't use them. They nicely recommended customer IO and having a look at customer IO and what they do, perfect for what we need. Or so it seemed. Customer IO needs you to have your client logged in, which sort of could be okay because we can make a login for every client who inquires. That's fine. We, we want to do that anyway. And we also want to make a, a login. We already have a login for every owner, but it makes it slightly complicated. I still got to get my head around it because it doesn't track information if the client's not logged in. And I don't know. There's, it's, it's not as simple as it first seemed. There's this company, intercom.io. I've read some reviews that said in comparison to customer.io they're nowhere near as good and um, there was one there was, there, was a, there was an intricacy that I didn't like but uh, you know beggars can't be choosers the other option is to potentially use MailChimp which we were thinking of using for sending out mails to clients and try and integrate this into working in the way we want it sending to owners seeing as we are going to be using this for clients this might be the first way we actually start to program it and the other option of course is to just do it straight out of the crm or do it straight out of our account my worry there would be if we send emails to a certain person and they don't like them or it gets if they get in the spam folder that's that's a disaster because then the entire domain would be in the spam folder and then any emails we try to send to that owner after would be in the spam folder um, but you know we're going to test it out over the next few weeks lastly we're looking at um, at this which is segment.com now what they do is they create as far as i can tell an api that you use to contact all the other apis so from segment from segment if we create api then we can 
we can connect to all of these guys. Um, I'm sure a lot of them are good that I haven't heard of, but the ones I have were AdRoll, we use them. Google AdWords, we use them. Bing Ads, we want to use them. Facebook Pixel. Twitter Ads. Google Analytics, HubSpot, Kissmetrics, Salesforce, you see there's a lot, there's a lot these connect with a lot of people and this is going to be quite interesting but uh, you know it's the beginning of a long 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 process two to five years this is going to take okay let me have a look at the agenda okay look we're just going to mention this again one of the reasons why for Villa Secrets as a franchise or as American Butterfly or the S World Network as a uh, a network is by creating a system that is used like this the first thing anybody who gets an inquiry is going to do is log it onto the system even if it's from a phone call or from an email they'll be logging onto the system we want to make it so nice so wonderful for them and so goddamn simple that they can use it straight out of the box and they just love it and it helps them you know they're more likely to make a sale by using our systems especially with all the re-emailing etc 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 than they are if they just did it on their own so they you start using the system and what this does is it avoids leads migrating from villa secrets franchises to other franchises other businesses ie we've had problems with working with companies who already have a small business that's not doing well and we come along and we say okay we're gonna give you a franchise or sell you a franchise and you're gonna start making lots of lots of money and they do but then suddenly their other business that wasn't doing so well starts doing quite well and it's things like using the email address constantly of the other business to speak to clients so it's when an email comes back from a return customer it seems like it's going to the old business by keeping everything in the crm from the word go we avoid any of that plus we these these companies will be like oh what? you know if we use this system on our old small business or our, you know bigger business we would do better so they'll start negotiating about bringing their other businesses into what we do i.e potentially as a franchise or potentially just using the systems and giving us a smaller you know one percent per uh you know one percent fee maybe something like that anyway okay that's it we've done the first three sections of the divergent crm i can see this video is going to take all day I'm taking a break now. Thank you much. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.